Hi, I'm agronomist Greg Phillips and welcome to my YouTube channel. This channel is separated into two types of videos, one are shorts that will address some of the challenges that you may be running into and give you concise and precise information of how to solve it. Then we'll have other videos, in-depth videos, that give you a little bit more background and details of how to manage your turf grass area, rather than be a home lawn, sports field, whatever. Today we're talking about fungus and how do we know or how do we identify fungus? Well, I got an idea. It's morning. What am I doing out here in the morning while I'm brewing my coffee? I haven't combed my hair yet. Oftentimes you come across a little spot of grass in your yard that's a little brown or looks a little weird or the leaves are twisted or maybe it's discolored like a red or a pink. Morning is when you're gonna come out here and you're gonna confirm if it's a fungus. So what happens during when it's dewy like this? The mycelia, which is the reproductive structures of the fungus, are actually out. During the day, when the sun comes out and it dries up a bit, um, yeah, those mycelia go away and they're very, they're very difficult to see. So in the morning is when I wanna come out here. I wanna look and I wanna confirm if I have a fungus or not. And here we go. We found some spots. And I'll use the word spot carefully. But if we look down, we can see these little white mycelia is what they are. Those are the reproductive structures of the fungus. This happens to be dollar spot. How do I know that? Well, I'm an agronomist and I know that. But you can also identify it because if you look, it's spot, 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 spot. This, this is a fairly aggressive area. In fact, this is not my yard, but um, it's actually the rough on the golf course out near live near it's kind of on a weird area where they're really not treating all that aggressively but i just give this for an example of what to find and what to look for but this is kind of typical of what you'd see with a fungus now what do we do about it okay so you've confirmed you have a fungus now what <clears throat> um, i'm not going to get too deep in the weeds on <laughs> pardon the pun uh on fungal identification i'm going to put a link down in the comments that if you want to really get into it and find out exactly what you want or what you have rather oh, not what you want is that's great um, I encourage you to do that um, what I'm trying to do I'm trying to give you the information so you can solve your problem fairly quickly now as far as options and what you have um, it's actually kind of limited but and I'll tell you why here in a second I really like this is a, a fungicide um, that is a DMI, I'll get to more of that in a second, but I really, I wanna stress, I really like these. These are really good applications. Um, put your garden hose on it, hit the button. Sometimes there's a full pull thing here, you turn it off, you turn it on, you spray it. Uh, generally, I've seen just about all these cover 5,000 square feet. Um, this one does. Um, this is a DMI fungicide. The reason why I'm kind of getting a little technical here i was really surprised and going around at all the stores that i went to hardware stores you know the big hardware stores the big walmarts etc even co-ops uh tractor supplies and such um i can only find dmi fungicides that were readily available and the reason being my concern is that dmi fungicides have a very specific way that they control fungus and that can lend itself to disease resistance of this product. So, and what happens is, is it'll not control as well. And if you keep on using it, using it, use it, there's a possibility of things can get really out of control and it won't control it at all. So you end up using more product and you have more disease pressure out of it. Um, what I would recommend that you do, um, apply this, okay, you apply it, let's say you do preventative. There's two rates, and I'll get to that in a second. Let's say you put it out preventatively. You can maybe do it two times in a row. You do it once, wait 30 days, do it again, and in the next 30 days, go out with a different product. Like um, a Scott's EX, for example, is one of the fungicides that is out there on the market. The only thing about the Scott's EX, it does not control dollar spot. So it will control other a whole lot of other fungal, um, fungus that won't control dollar spot it'll also control pythium and if you're trying to identify pythium if you get down in that mycelia probably you're not going to have it but it is a it's a blight it's very aggressive um fungus 
But if you get down and look at the mycelium, if you see black, usually, I call it smoke ring. There's, a, there's usually a smoke ring and there's usually some brown, gray, or, or pardon me, there's usually some black or some gray. It's kind of ominous looking. Um, that probably is going to be Pythium. So you might want to go with the Scots EX. Um, if you don't have Pythium, um, the Scots Lawn Fungus Control. It's a thiophate methyl. And the only way that I've seen it, I've not seen it in a liquid like this. I've seen it in a granular only. Granulars are fine. Nothing wrong with them. They're a little bit more expensive than liquids. Um, and they take a little bit longer to get into the plant. That's fine. Uh, the thiophate methyl is actually the active ingredient. But the Scots Lawn Fungus Control. I would put this out and no more than twice in a row. If you're going out with a program, put it out once, wait 28 days, put it out again, wait 28 days, put it out again, and follow up with something different. Now you're gonna get some disease resistance. So now let's talk about preventative and curative rates real quick. Um, I, I mentioned a preventative fungal program. Generally, when you go out with a preventative rate, a curative rate, is a preventive rate is before you get the disease, before you have any disease at all in there, okay? Then you'll go out with a preventative rate. A curative rate means you are curing, okay? That means that you have fungus active, like we saw previously. You generally, what I've seen on just about every fungus I've ever worked on, the curative rate is twice that of the preventative. So if you go out at three ounces per thousand square feet to the, 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 on preventative, curative rates can be six ounces per thousand square feet. So you're using twice as much chemical, you're spending twice as much money. And in this situation, it's not twice as much, but it's half the time. If you look at the label, what they say on preventative is you put it out and then you wait 28 days and you put it out again, okay? On curative, you already have the disease. They say go out after 15 days, I think it's 14 or 15, read the label, label's the law, um, it really is. It's on there for a reason, you can kill grass, waste time if you don't follow the label, um, and waste money. But um, you go out in 16 days. So over a 30 day period, what would you only use one uh, application, one bottle, now you're using two for every thousand square feet that you have. So do keep that in mind, that's generally what if you have a very high area, if you have very high tolerance, and we're getting into the integrated pest management, I'll get into that in another video. We're talking about tolerances and your expectations of your lawn or turf area. If you have extremely high expectations, I'd recommend go ahead and go with a preventative program. Start putting this out sometime. Um, I'm in the mid-Atlantic region. I would put it out on a home lawn sometime between man, the 7th and 15th of May. Um, uh, before that, uh, you may have some red thread. Um, it is, and it's it's a uh, it's a fungus. If I mentioned pink mycelia, you'll see a little bit of pink in it. Um, you can have that a little earlier, but generally, it's not all that aggressive of a of a fungal fungus. If you are concerned about that, you can go start going this out about uh, mid April. Okay, um, but sometime around that mid April to mid March, probably start your program. Now far as granular. Um, on granular fungicides, generally on the back they have a spreader setting, but the problem is if you don't have, this one here has um, Scots and Virgo is the only ones they have. If you have a different spreader that's not one of those, you're kind of stuck in getting, making sure, and this generally stuff is extremely fine. It's usually on a, I'm not 100% sure on this one, but most of them are on a corn cob carrier. They're just corn cobs crushed up and they take the chemical and spray it on there. And that, and you're actually putting out crushed up corn cobs. And uh, the, the, the fungicide in this case is actually absorbed into the corn cobs. And then when it gets on the grass, the water gets it and washes it out and goes into the plant, into the soil and then ultimately into the plant. So um, these would cost a little more than the um, liquid. Uh, these probably are about the same as a granular as far as cost. You're, if you are looking at cost, your cheapest way to do it is buy it and concentrate and put it out yourself with a backpack sprayer. I will have a video that shows you um, how to calibrate a backpack spray and make sure that you're putting out the proper amount of fungicide, herbicide, whatever you're putting out if you're using a backpack sprayer and if you're going with the concentrated rate. Um, 
but anyway, that's that's pretty much fungicide 101. Uh, and you know, these are there again, these are broad spectrum fungicides. That's why I'm not getting too deep into the weeds on identifying them. Um, there are some subtleties, um, but generally, you're looking for that mycelia. You're looking for red, pink coloring on the plant. Um, you're also looking, sometimes you will actually get some, what they call leaf rust. Um, you'll get a speckles of brown on the leaf. And generally that's not that all that aggressive fungus. It's the dollar spot, it's the pythiums um, that generally are, are, the, are the issues. So that's why I'm stressing those two the most. But I, I'll put that, um, put some information in the comments for you about finding out um, a good key for the fungicides. And if you have a question, you can always email me the emails down in the comments or um put something in the comments so i hope you enjoyed the video if you do please like and subscribe and uh if you do subscribe we'll make we'll be posting more videos and you'll get those and those can hope to help you out as well um greg phillips and thanks a lot a little bit of bonus footage here i actually found some pythium um, so that way you can discern, like we've talked about the Scott's EX, you can discern between dollar spot and pythium so you know which one you have. Um, so anyway, look at this. Okay, here we are. Here's pythium. If this was dollar spot, I'll give you a scale here. Okay. Um, if this was dollar spot, it would probably be anywhere from the size of my thumbnail to maybe the size of my thumb in total. But this, as you can see, is the size of the palm of my hand. Uh, that's probably one distinctive characteristics. Um, this has probably popped up in the last day. Uh, this actually might be the first morning for it. And you can see it on down through here. So, at any rate, a little bit over there. Um, and the, I'm not seeing a whole I, I'm seeing a little bit of gray but you can I mean the mycelia are just going crazy and that is a pretty good characteristic of pythium and I mean it just it's just destroying this grass so anyway but that gives you an idea if you're seeing these larger areas dollar spot there again is about the size of a 50 cent or, or pardon me of a the old dollar um, that's why they call it dollar spots about the size of a um uh, um, there used to be a, a 50 cent piece, for example. Um, and it's about that big, usually. So, but you can see the difference here with this pythium coming in. It's it's very large, attacks a very large area. So that this would this you would need that um, Scott's EX rather than the the DMI fungicide or the uh, or the Scott's fungal control like I was talking about. So anyway, it's just a follow up to let you know the difference between the two.